you know, we were fortunate to get a get a three game lead. So we're going to have the opportunity to feel that at least four times. So we're going to opportunity to learn. Um, but it's it's not something that you can truly appreciate till you go through it. Well, if you're not winning, you better be learning. That seems like that was the message from head coach Paul Maurice after that game four debacle in Edmonton. Yes, the Panthers are still in the hunt for the cup, as are we here with our pregame show. Mike Cunho alongside Steve Goldstein. Goldie, the reason why we're actually in the hallway at uh, Amherst Bank Arena is because they are going through the Stanley Cup presentation practice right now. Let's hope they actually do that tonight. Uh, Goldie, when we talk about this game coming in here, uh, everything has to center around how the guys are feeling. You thought maybe last game a little tight. Today at Morning Skate, any different? Yeah, they're, they're loosey-goosey now. I think that game may have been good for them. You know, it's very hard to sweep anybody in the Stanley Cup final. It hasn't happened in 26 years. So I think this team kind of took a deep breath, relaxed. It's a 3-1 series lead. They had won six in a row before that game. And it's kind of a throwaway. You know, yeah. if you invested maybe emotionally and you lost the game in overtime, maybe it would kind of linger. I think they were kind of checked out of that game, maybe midway through, certainly in the third period. So back home uh, for this game five, first time ever they've got a chance to win a Stanley Cup in this building. And I think the two days off in between games actually helped them. They're now in a normal routine. Yeah. And the other thing is that the line is so thin between these teams that get to this point that maybe they were a little satisfied after getting that third, that game three win. Maybe you thought of, hey, we got that win we needed. We got the split. It's funny, after the game, I was talking to somebody. They said, you know, if we lost game three and we won game four, everybody would feel amazing. They'd yep. feel fantastic. So I do think they feel that good. I think the biggest thing tonight is the crowd is going to be so revved up. Um, it's the second crack they have at it to wrap up the series and win the first Stanley Cup in franchise history. I think almost try not to be too revved up. In right. some ways, you got to treat it as another game and each man not try to do too much. Actually, Aaron Ekblad said that this morning. He said, you know, there was a lot of pressure and build up for game four, but today just feels like any, or, any other day, any other game. All right, so as we mentioned, the cup is in the building. You, you talked about the fans. I was nervous walking back in, <laughs> walking into this building. I did not feel that way. A uh, little humbling experience maybe from last game. But I think it's one of those situations where you don't know what you don't know, right? The Panthers, with the exception of a couple guys, have never been in a clinching situation for a cup. Do you think after they went through that, now they can kind of settle in tonight? I do think it helps. You know, it's funny. When you look at football, right, Yeah. you don't have a series. Like, you go to the playoffs, you lose the one game, you're done. So the fact that they got to a 3 nothing lead, they got a few cracks at this thing. Now, they yeah. hope this is the last one they need, the last thing anybody wants for numerous reasons is to get back on the plane and go to Edmonton or, in some people's media case, go to Calgary and then drive the three <laughs> hours to Edmonton. So they want to wrap it up. But, yes, I do think having that experience, they knew the cup was in the building the other day. And they also now realize, you know, how that other team plays at that desperation level. And the Edmonton Oilers are a terrific team. They've got a great offense. I thought they had nothing to lose the other night, Mike. Yeah. They gambled a lot. They were stretching guys out, just blowing guys out of the zone. A lot of those plays worked. Maybe they don't do that quite as much tonight, and the Panthers certainly will, will adjust to it. So I, I think both mentally and from the on-ice strategy standpoint, mm -hmm. I, I think Game 4 will help them tonight. So Game 4 will help them. I think the first three games helped them too. Just a reminder, hey, even if they score first, keep doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And I think they got away from that there in game four. Let's hear from Gustav Forzing. Man, the defense had a rough night out there. Let's hear from Gus about how they can improve and maybe get back on the right track, maybe from the jump in this one. Kind of uh, want to build off the last first three games. I feel like we play with a little tighter gap. I think uh, we let them a little bit off the hook uh, in, in the fourth game. Uh, didn't play as tight as we wanted as a team. And it starts uh, starts with me and, and all the defensemen with, uh, with a tight gap. And uh, I think that's what we want to improve. So you are going to keep Connor McDavid quiet forever. At some point in this series, he was going to explode for a bunch of points. He gets four there in game four. But defensively for those guys, I got to imagine that group in particular 
wants to have a bounce back game more than anyone else. Well, really uncharacteristic. Yeah. They're the best defensive team in hockey. When Forsling talks about that tight gap, he's talking about being there right on top of those players in that neutral zone and when they start crossing the blue line. So what Edmonton did with their speed, they were able to back the Panthers up, backing into their own zone. That gives them way too much room. The Oilers are a fast team. They got in behind the defense as well. So I think it will be much tighter gaps tonight. As soon as an Oiler gets a puck or as soon as they try to get over that blue line and Forsling's the leader back there with that great stick, stepping up the anticipation at the right time, they'll be much better at it. The one good thing about this Panther team, they played 205 games now yeah. over the last two years under Paul Maurice. And pretty much every single time mm -hmm. they've had a game like that or in the regular season a stretch like that, whether it's a week, whether it's five games, they're always able to adapt and get back to it. You know, they're 4-1 and one after a loss in these playoffs, and the only loss may have been the best game they played the entire playoffs, that Ranger game in yep. Game 3, where I think they outshot attempted them like 110-43. to 43. It, was yep. a, it was a fluky game. So they respond well, and Sergei Bobrovsky responds well, and I think they'll do a much better job in front of him tonight. We saw Chris Knobloch make a, make a line change there for uh, the Oilers in Game 4. Any matchup things that maybe Paul Maurice can get to today, or does it just go back to what he's been doing? Well, number one, I thought it was a great job by Knobloch. I thought it was actually a little too late. Yeah. Finally giving somebody in Ryan Nugent Hopkins to Leon Dreisaitl. Nothing mm -hmm. against the players Dreisaitl was playing with, but you're not winning a Stanley Cup with Corey Perry at this point in his career on a second line. Right. you got to give Dreisaitl some talent. So they did a good job with that. Now, what Edmonton did in game number three, I guess may maybe out of despera desperation facing a sweep, they went, went their third line with Jan Mark and Henrique against the Barkov line, and it worked. Not only did they shut them down offensively, that line actually yep. scored. I think it's a big, huge point you bring up, Mike. Tonight, you know, Alexander Barkov, along with Forsling and Ekblad, will be on the ice against Connor McDavid mm -hmm. almost exclusively. So I think the fact the Panthers are back home, have the last change from a matchup standpoint, is a big factor. And of course, rev it up. The old Lamborghini with his energy <laughs> and speed and hitting yeah. will be in the lineup tonight. Mm -hmm. You know, they've rotated those players throughout the season and the playoffs, and it seems like. Every single time Paul Maurice has made one of those substitutions, it's worked well. And, you know, we were up there with uh, Lomberg I was gonna mention at it. games three and four at Edmonton. He was sitting in our area. The way he was talking and moving, you would have thought he was down on the bench. He was fired up whether he plays or not. Fired up the entire time. It was 6 one 7 one, eight, one and he's still leaning over the bench, looking down at the ice standing. It was actually really impressive to see, and you could tell just how badly he wanted to be in there. But I think the important thing is with Lomberg, his his demeanor, his personality doesn't change whether he's in or not. Now, Ryan Lomberg, of course, is a crowd pleaser, and that crowd will be behind the Panthers tonight, the first time we could say that in a couple of games, and you better believe the Panthers are happy to be home. Yeah, obviously we love playing in front of our home fans, and uh, they've been supporting us all year long and throughout the playoffs. It's been really loud in there, and yeah, it's going to be an awesome atmosphere, and I'm excited, looking forward to it. Our buildings have been unbelievable, the, the whole playoffs, and uh, um, I don't anticipate it being any any less than that, even more, and uh, um, it's, it's going to be exciting. It's exciting. Like, that's, if you look in a deep perspective, that's why you play this game. You know, since you've been a kid, you dream to be in this situation where we are right now and uh, where we have been in 2019, and just... Uh, it's a good time to be alive, you know, especially with the, this group around us. And uh, I think, yeah, that's, that's why we play. Yeah, it should be a fun night out here. They're expecting Jack Nicholas, you know, famous pro golfer, to be out here banging the drum. So it should be an electric crowd. But you know, someone who's really enjoyed watching these games, especially from down low, Paul Maurice, he kind of jokes that he doesn't have a big impact. He kind of kind of touched on a, a little bit earlier about what he's getting to do. But do you think he has to say anything different to these guys? Or after a loss like that, there's nothing that needs to be said because it was so bad, so ugly, everyone knows that they've got to step up. Yeah, I don't think there really is much to be said. You know, these guys, really since late last season, um, they kind of run the room themselves. And this year's team is a little bit um, more of a serious group, maybe more of the personality, guys like Barkoff and Reinhardt. So I'm sure we'll have a few words in there. Yeah. But for Paul Maurice, it's just about having his finger on the pulse, making the few adjustments in-game, and kind of just reinforcing, hey guys, 
you know the way we got here. We got a great four check. We play defense first. We protect in front of Sergei Bobrovsky. Just kind of reinforce that. I do think during the game, though, you know, depending upon how the game goes, remember, Paul Maurice switched Evan Rodriguez up with Barkov. There's usually some changes there. Rodriguez, maybe Verhage, maybe Tarasenko. So if necessary, he could always go that way. I got full confidence in Paul Maurice. And remember for him, you know, game four, maybe, maybe it was a learning experience also. Yeah. He's trying to win his first Stanley Cup, and this is the first time he's had a chance to actually clinch one in 26 years. Now, in these big moments, you want your big-time players to show up. Uh, how badly do you think Alexander Barkov and Sergei Bobrovsky want another crack? Like, I got to imagine they've been itching to get back on the ice. And I think they really have to lean on those two guys. You guys make the most money. You're the stars. You got to lead us to a victory tonight. No doubt. And they could cement not only their NHL legacy. I've said before, I think Bobrovsky is a Hall of Famer. Yeah. But if he wins a cup, he's automatically no in. No Next doubt. year, he's going to get to 400 wins. Only 12 goalies ever have that. Two Veznas and a cup and a cup final appearance he's in alexander barkov may cement it as well because he's probably got i don't know mike five ten more really good years left and you look at the numbers he's put up trying to be the first finish captain to win a stanley cup so there's no question those guys want to cement themselves in hockey history yeah. i'm sure the way those guys approach the game they're probably not thinking about that today um, but it's just a fact. And the other thing is, they cement themselves in South Florida sports history. Yep. Only three times have we witnessed a professional team win a championship at home here in South Florida. The Panthers are trying to make that number four. It doesn't happen often. And you look back on that World Series, the Marlins won 27 years ago, and the two titles, the Heat won now more than a decade ago. You can remember every moment. Yep. You remember Edgar Renteria scoring. You remember Ray Allen hitting shots. You remember every single one of those moments for Bobrovsky and Barkov and throw Kachuk in there as well. It's the same situation for them yeah. tonight. Yeah, Matthew Kachuk talked about this is the dream. You know, this is, this is what they're playing for. We can hear the music in the building, so we know the cup <laughs> is certainly here. It'll they're rolling be, it in. Roll it in. You know, at the end of last show, I said, let's hope this is the last one. I was just kidding. We wanted to do we one more. One. We want to hang out with you we for one more time. We wanted to do one more, <laughs> but let's lock it down because Connor McDavid wants to drag Florida back to Edmonton, and that would mean they'd be dragging us back to Edmonton, <laughs> and uh, nobody wants that. Let's end it here tonight. Uh, this is another edition of Hunt for the Cup. Who knows? Maybe this time will, in fact, be the last one. Goldie, thanks so much. Bruno, behind the camera, thanks so much. Great and job thanks. all throughout, and <laughs> yes, maybe we'll see him in Edmonton later this week. That's right. He's our Alexander Barkov. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching, and hopefully we don't see you again. Hunt for the Cup on CBS News Miami is sponsored by your Volkswagen dealers of South Florida. Check out local offers at VWFlorida.com.